Reporting for duty is Commander Bick Fury. David Hasselhoff and Samuel Jackson are total hacks. And we're gonna go over the Night Stalkers. Looks pretty interesting. We're gonna get Blade, Oath, and also Man Thing. In addition to that, we're gonna get Agatha and Moon Knight. I don't know if I would call them reworks, but they're definitely getting stat increases and some modifications to their kit. Let's get into it. Night Stalkers. Crime fighting is a 24-hour job, but some of the super-powered individuals do their best work when the sun goes down, like our newest team, the Night Stalkers. The best part about the Night Stalkers is the new squad was shaped through fan votes on our website by all of you. The result, newest Marvel Strike Force character, which is Oath, which was voted by the community, which is Karen Page, who was mentored by Morbius, Unique lore for the new Marvel Strike Force character. Squad mate shaped by your votes and lore. I believe we voted for Man Thing and Moon Knight as well. The team that turned out amazing. So great job, everyone. We can't wait to work with all of you again on our future team. I, I think this is great. And I got to say this team is super fast. Um, Blade does a lot of cool things. Oath has kind of like that Kang 5% on offense, which is amazing. Just like King has the way of applying exposed and man thing is a is a tank a pre-taunting tank and gives a lot of speed the team seems really really fast karen page won the fan vote for which character should turn up in the into a vampire karen page who adopted the superhero moniker oath is joined by the daywalker himself blade as well as man thing and two upgraded strike veterans moon knight and agatha Night Stalkers will specialize in mythic raids, but the team can also terrorize squads like Spider Society and Extreme X-Men and Alliance War as well. Wow. And I don't even think there's a raid call out on Blade at all, so it, it's pretty good. So beware of the darkened corridors on helicarriers. Yeah, we're, we're here on the helicarrier. This is my helicarrier. <laughs> Review the kits below and prepare to turn out the lights on enemies. Let's beat them. Now, the the only thing that concerns me a little bit about Blade, all of his abilities have awakened abilities, which I don't know. That means it could be expensive or they could be delayed. We'll have to see how that is released. We found out from before that Blade is not a dark promotion character, not dark promotion credit character, and Blade is not legendary so let's get back to the kit blade is a brawler and along with the powers of vampire he possesses high damage and health that help him drive a stake through the heart of enemies all of blades attacks and or defense up and apply defense down making him a great option to cut down teams that rely on defense up all of blades slain enemies stay six feet under as all of his abilities prevent revive fantastic blade also makes his enemies feel like they're ice skating uphill by reducing enemy speed bar with his basic and ultimate abilities. And although Blade doesn't have any raid callouts in his kit, he helps his Night Stalker allies stay in raids by granting them drain. And also Agatha will give them drain as well. Traits, Hero City, Mystic, Brawler, Vampire, Night Stalker, speed of 127. But check it out. This is part of man things gain 20% speed night stalker allies gain 20% speed then on oaths kit karen's kit on spawn on offense build speed bar by five percent for self and all allies so that is exactly like kang's kit right there so 127 is not too bad but when paired up in a team of Night Stalkers with Man Thing and on offense, as long as Oath is on the team, I mean, that could be like 160. 127 plus 20% is like 152. And then if you get another 5%, 160. Let's go down to the passive and work backwards. And it seems to me that the passives give him a ton of ways of gaining assist now and also make his crit chance go through the roof and then on his iso attack has crit damage modifier so this guy could be bonkers right here so we're just going to read the passive characters killed by blade cannot be revived nice 
On successful attack by this character, clear defense up and apply defense down to each attack target. At the end of any turn, flip slow and offense down to two random Night Stalker allies or self that has slow or offense down. Amazing! This character's attacks deal an additional 20% piece piercing to any vampire enemies. Okay. We'll see what, how that plays out. I don't know that we have... Off the top of my head, I don't think we have any vampires in the game. Maybe that's going to be some PvE content of some kind. Uh, or maybe there'll be future vampire characters. I'm I'm not really sure how that's going to play out. We're going to have to look. Well, the, he's a vampire. So the mirror match, I guess. I didn't catch that he was a vampire. Let's keep going. Uh, gain 30% drain Night Stalkers. Allies gain 30% drink. And then this is a little bit concerning to me here. Is that a lot of the awesomeness that could be a part of Blade's kick is gonna be locked behind an awakened ability. And we have no insight on how that is gonna happen on this team at all. On self or ally crit on the following turn, gain assist now. That sounds amazing. Gain 10% crit chance and all allies gain 10% crit chance. None of this is tied to night stalkers that may mean that blade is good outside of his team now i want to go all the way up to the basic because we're talking about the assist mechanic attack primary target for piercing reduce speed bar by 10 percent repeat this attack once this attack ignores defense up is unavoidable and cannot be blocked and i just got to say uh, this carries over to the ISO attack and the reducing speed bar mechanic is very, very powerful in Marvel Strike Force. And I'm gonna say that probably Striker is gonna be a good choice. Uh, but all those crit advantages also lends itself to Raider. And then also the assist mechanic lends for him to be skirmisher so you can take advantage of the striker skirmisher striker combo so i think you know from reading initially in the kit he could be any one of those three but this seems so important that i'm leaning towards striker his awakened ability adds 20 percent crit damage again then that'd be good with um raider well the additional crit chance helps raider but the crit damage is just a bonus i suppose ISO counter tag primary target reduce uh, speed bar by 10%. So the, you know, let's say you're hitting into a vulnerable, right? Reduce speed bar by 10, 20, 30% seems pretty amazing. 20% crit damage on the awakened ability, which is somewhat of a luxury, but the awakened on the passive seems like vital to the way that the kit works and the character works. I think that's gonna be a big deal. Let's go to the ultimate ability, 6-6. Six, six. So this is gonna go off turn one, attack primary target for piercing, reduce speed bar by 25%, steal 20% health from target, redistribute to self, this bypassed heal block. I can't stress how important this type of mechanic is. This is a turn-based game right and anytime you can manipulate your speed bar up and their speed bar down that is going to be vital to the outcome of the battle if we look at characters like eternals icarus and cersei this is a very powerful mechanic if you're hitting into vulnerable it'll lock down 25 percent plus another 10 also he's going to go be very early native speed of 127 and 20 percent more from man thing it was makes him 152 and then another five percent on spawn Woof! this is gonna be a very good character just from this point of view from target reduce to yourself this bypasses heal block attack primary adjacent targets for piercing and Reduce speed bar by 25%, clear immunity, apply disrupted two turns. So this is gonna hit, you know, this is a adjacent, a target. So it's not a full AOE like Icarus, but still this is a very good mechanic. Apply disrupted for two turns. This attack ignores defense up, is unavoidable and cannot be blocked. And ignoring defense up is very important. Uh, Kang has that on his special and that is a very good attack. What is added with the awakened ability? 
Blind for two turns. Seems pretty awesome. I, I, I'm a little bit skeptical of these awakened abilities. Uh, fortunately, Blade is the only one on this team that has awakened abilities on all of them. And some of them seem more important than others. Then we're going to go to the special. Glaive Volley, 4-4. Four, four. Attack primary and adjacent targets for piercing. Clear speed up, apply slow. This attack ignores defense up, is unavoidable, and cannot be blocked. And then... Again, this seems super useful. Clear one negative effect from all allies. Clear all negative effects from self. Now, this in itself is not that great, but this seems pretty good. Also, not a lot of callouts in this kit to Night Stalker. So this makes uh, Blade appear on paper to be very plug and play viable. Next, we got to go to Oath, which is Karen Page, mentored by Morbius, Exposed and has the passive similar to that of Kane on spot. We still use from time to time cable, right? Inside of Crucible. Well, this is gonna make Oath a good character for a long time, just in the same way that Kane probably will be a good character from time to time. Oath is a controller for the Night Stalker team with high damage and focus. Like a true vampire, Oath hits enemies with plenty of bleed along with heal block. She hides her fangs on her passive ability. At the end of Oath or any Night Stalker's allies turn, she attacks the most injured enemy who has exposed for piercing damage and reduces the duration of all positive effects by one. So this is going to be an, like Thanos. In-game Thanos has this. Any positive effect that has a duration of zero expires instantly, including safeguards. So she can get rid of of safeguard this is going to be tied to exposed in rage she's the battery for her team supplying night stalkers allies with ability energy on spawn and on enemy death of night stalker ally who uh, didn't have full energy to start to him now i want to read what her passive says about exposed and then i'll give some context to the way that exposed mechanic works in itself exposed does not do anything right it just does not do anything at all so we're going to read this right here. It says, uh, attack the most injured, injured enemy with exposed for 240% piercing. Reduce the duration of all positive effects by one. Any positive effect that has a duration of zero expires instantly, including safeguard. So the thing about this is that it's tied to Night Stalker. So I don't think that she's going to be good in a full exposed team other than her ultimate has the a way has a way of applying exposed so this kind of reads the same way that nightcrawler has exposed he has a way of applying exposed and then his basic does a little bit more stuff well this has a little bit more stuff with exposed but it doesn't add anything really as far as the passive goes with the rest of the team but where like if we look at mephisto's now so let me explain exposed in itself does nothing then you have to look at the passives of the characters to see if exposed actually does anything mephisto enemies of exposed cannot fill speed bar monstrous in-game thanos right here quite an ama amazing once per turn when an enemy with exposed is attacked generate one ability energy to two random allies super scroll enemies with exposed cannot gain safeguard deflect or evade right once per turn when enemy with exposed is attacked this character attacks all enemies for five percent of this character's max health and barrier and so on and so on and then vol has an exposed mechanic once per turn with enemy exposed is attacked steal five percent health so you get where this is going so even though nightcrawler has exposed there's no real tie to nightcrawler um, giving like extra meaning to the exposed. The same is somewhat true with Oaf. And I'm going to have a hard time calling her Karen. Let's read the entire passive and then we'll work back. On spawn, on offense, fill speed bar by 5% for self and all allies. On offense. So this reads identical to that of Kang. On this character, any Night Stalkers turn in, attack the most injured enemy with exposed which is gonna be applied uh, in raids with her basic and then 
uh, her ultimate. So it's going to be more important in raids. Piercing, reduce the duration of all positive effects. So that'll bypass safeguard. In raids, copy and clear two random effects for self and all Night Stalker allies to that exposed enemy. Nice. In raids, apply regeneration to self and all Night Stalker allies. On enemy death, generate one ability energy for self and all Night Stalker allies. We're not at full energy at the start. In raids, fill speed bar for 25% for self and all Night Stalker allies. We already mentioned that they're fast. I think she's 126 speed, 126 speed, you know, plus 20% from man thing is 151. And then, you know, at the start of battle, her passive is another 5%, giving effective speed of 158 on spawn, 159 on spawn, but throughout the rest of the match, 151. On spawn, generate six ability energies uh, and all Night Stalker allies. So this is all raids right here. Enemy controller turn, apply safeguard to self and all Night Stalker allies. So those are raid mechanics. Let's go to her ultimate. Her ultimate has a way of applying exposed. 6-6, six, six, attack all enemies for piercing. Apply exposed to bleed and heal block to the primary target. In raids, instead, apply three heal block and bleed and heal block and trauma to all enemies. Very nice. This attack gains 20% damage against enemies with safeguard. This attack cannot be blocked, counteract, or counterattacked or dodged. Special 4-4, four, four, steal 20% health from primary target, redistribute yourself. This bypassed heal block. Apply ability block for two turns of primary target. Attack primary adjacent targets for piercing. And apply bleed and heal block. In raid, steal 40% health. The primary target instead cannot be dodged. Now, here's the basic attack. Attack primary target for piercing. Apply bleed and heal block. In raids, apply exposed to primary target. When forced to attack an ally. So this is an anti mic control ability. This character does not apply exposed or any negative effects to Night Stalker Our allies, characters. This attack cannot be counterattacked or dodged. Now, here is the ISO counter assist. Attack primary target for piercing. Apply a heal block. In raids, apply exposed to primary target. When forced, and then it has the anti mind control. So, I mean, I, nothing in her kit really screams striker outside of raids, but maybe in raids, in raids, this would be a um, this would be a striker character. I think other than that, this more reads like a raider type character we're going to go to man thing who has a speed of 120 times the 20 percent from his passive is 144 if he gets five percent on spawn you know they're, they're going to be i think they're going to be useful they pretty much told us that they're going to be useful um against what spider society extreme all right and then they're also going to have massively boosted stats well all characters after Ares Air have like what 30% extra stats on average. Man Thing is a towering protector for the Night Stalkers who redistributes enemy fire while dragging foes down into the muck. He gains taunt on spawn if he has three not st Night Stalker allies and gains two turns of taunt with his ultimate. Man Thing entangles enemies and prevents them from taking turns by applying slow with each of his attacks. But he also propels his Night Stalker allies by granting them additional speed via his passive abilities, 20%, which is huge. And then we're not going to read this Daredevil part because I don't care about Daredevil. I don't care about Daredevil. All right, let's get to the most important part of his kit, which is going to be the second line. Uh, not that right down there, right here. Gain 20% speed. Night Stalker allies gain 20% speed. That's bonkers on spawn. If his character has three or more Night Stalker allies, gain taunt and immunity. Pre-taunting tank. On enemy turn in, bury yourself for 10% of this character's max health. While this character is above 50% health, this character cannot gain stun. I actually kind of really like this. Like, Gladiator has some mechanics like this where his kit works differently when he's above or below 50%. I, I think that's fantastic. I hope they do more kind of stuff like this. When this character drops below 50% health, if this character has taunt, clear taunt. Gain stealth and regeneration. So that kind of reminds me of um, Sasquatch. Uh, you know, he's a pre taunting tank, and then he has a way of, of going into stealth when he drops below a threshold. I think it's fantastic. There's a couple characters that have that. Again, probably the most important part of the, his kit altogether is going to be the 20% speed to himself and Night Stalker allies in raids. This is all fine, but this is raids only. This character takes a turn. Enemy protector characters cannot gain immunity. So that's a, a counter to Gladiator. 
Before this character takes a turn, ability block cannot be applied to self or any Night Stalker allies. So if we think about the boss node um, inside of the Mythic Raids, uh, what, there's a uh, Void Knight that creates problems. So this should eliminate that. I'm not really sure, but that feels like a good thing. Let's go to the ultimate 6-6 six, six, tech all enemy for 400% damage, prolong the duration of all negative effects. Excluding ability block stun and trauma by one. Apply slow for two turns to all enemies. In raids, clear disruptive from self and gain safeguard for two turns. Nice. I mean, then potentially could have immunity and safeguard and taunt. I think that's fantastic. Gain taunt for two turns. There it is. Apply defense up for two turns to self and all Night Stalker allies. Clear two negative effects to self and Night Stalker allies. And pretty much the, the perfection of this particular type of thing. Safeguard plus taunt plus defense up and immunity. You know, that would be very good. All right. Let's go to the special 4-4 attack primary and adjacent targets for damage. Target has slow. Apply stun. If any target has slow, apply stun. Fantastic. Apply slow for two turns. Primary target and adjacent targets. Clear all negative effects from self and then raids. Also do that to Night Stalkers and apply defense up to self and all Night Stalker allies. Basic attack. Attack primary target for 200% damage. Apply slow up to maximum three apply bleed for to any non daredevil target <laughs> okay there's a daredevil call out gain to regeneration apply defense up to the most injured non summon night stalker ally without defense up and then his iso counter assist sometimes referred to as a safety attack attack primary target for damage piercing apply slow up to maximum three apply bleed to any non daredevil target get out of here with that Gain two regeneration, <laughs> apply defense up to the most injured non summon Night Stalker ally without defense up. Now, we're going to go over Moon Knight and Agatha. I mean, monstrous, look at this, monstrous stat increases, uh, which may be impactful, but not really drastic changes to the kit. So, huge, huge, huge stat increases. Um, they, they, they add the Night Stalker tag. So the gear, and then same thing right here, they, they, the special dev does more rebounds and in raids cannot be counterattacked. The ultimate used to have in war, and now it's going to be pretty much anywhere and un unavoidable when paired with three or more Night Stalker allies. The passive, it just gets rid of the, the war while this character has counter gain. It's just gain 50% damage. So we we'll have to see um, how impactful this is. I mean, if we look at Lady Deathstrike, uh, Lady Deathstrike is proving to be amazing just because of the stat increases. And so one would hope that Moon Knight would get the similar amount of love when we get to play Moon Knight and then Agatha. Hopefully these changes will go live sooner than later, but I right now currently have no word as to when these changes will go live. Agatha, which Agatha has a pretty decent kit Look at these stat increases. My goodness. Adds the Night Stalker tag. Adds the Night Stalker tag. Basically, that's all it is. Add Night Stalker. Add Night Stalker. Add Night Stalker. This is kind of interesting, though. Focus and drain. So this will be added to the drain that Blade gives the team as well. What do you think? Does this... The, do the merits of the characters justify... You know, the cost, I think a lot of people are using Bifrost with Mephisto. Some people are unlocking Odin. Uh, I feel like currently, you know, as someone that has Mephisto, uh, getting through the raids right now is manageable. But this is the current version of the raids. What is the next version of the raids going to look like? And also, what is that going to look like? Um going down the road it just that's what i'm curious about so we'll have to see but if the team has value um outside of raids i think that's where a lot of people will be excited um for me it looks like blade has a little bit and oath has a little bit and then blade paired up with man thing seems very interesting just the three piece there itself lee it seems very interesting check out my merch bye for now Go big or go home. With Whale Harder, nothing's too big to conquer. Now available on Amazon. With Amazon Prime, get fast and free delivery.
Link in the description.